Good afternoon, Bees fans, and welcome to the Hive London for this afternoon's live from the Hive broadcast as the Bees host Aldershot Town in Vanarama National League action. Coming up on our live from the Hive pre-match show, there's two interviews on the way as we firstly sit down with last weekend's man of the match, Sam Beard, followed by an interview with new goalkeeping coach, Dave Anderson. There's plenty to come, so sit back, relax and get in the mood for this afternoon's match. After signing on loan from Dorking Wanderers, defender Sam Beard put in an impressive display in his debut against Maidenhead United. He was in fact voted your man of the match. We sat down with him to get his thoughts on joining the Bees. Sam, welcome to Barnet. It's great to have you here. You must be delighted to, to get into some full-time football after the, the end of the National League South season. Yeah, it's good. Great club, great setup down here. Good gaffer, the boys are good. So I'm looking forward to it. Have you found, you, it's just been under a week since you joined, have you found the first week? It's been a bit, bit of a, a whirlwind week, you making your debut last Saturday. Yeah, it's a uh, right game's coming to clean sheet. Gaffer got us well drilled on the Thursday and Friday, just made sure we were solid. So coming in, getting man of the match, team of the week, I was quite happy. Talk us through that performance Saturday. You had to play quite a bit of it on a yellow card. Was it about putting in almost a mature performance from that yeah, point? Yeah, it was a silly early yellow from me. I should, probably shouldn't have got it, but had to be sensible after that. And then the boys were quality, we were solid. And I thought, yeah, we just had a clean sheet in the end. Just talk us... Uh, talk to us a bit about your time at Dorking. Plenty of success there and they seem to be a club on the rise and you've played a big part in that. Yeah, I've been down at Dorking for five years. Great setup. The boys are quality down there, good players and they're definitely on the rise. I wouldn't be surprised if you see them in this league next season. They probably deserved it this season when I was there. But no, it's a great setup, great club and it's helped me progress. Talk to you about the rest of the boys. You seem to have fit in well with them and did it help in a way joining on the same day as the other Sam, Sam Skeffington? Yeah, it's right joining with a new boy and obviously the gaffer was pretty much new so none of the boys really knew him but I settled in quite well I think. It's decent. We've got all the shot coming up at the Hive potentially making your home debut. What are we expecting from them? I'm looking forward to playing at the ground. It looks lovely, pitch looks good. It's going to be another battle again, tough game but you know we've got to build on that clean sheet we've got Saturday and progress from there I think. There's 12 or so games to go this season. We've laid a nice little foundation with, as you said, a, a solid performance away at Maidenhead. What do you want from the rest of the campaign? Uh, looking as a team, we've got to keep building, try to get as many points as we can, put in better performances. Obviously, the team haven't been doing great. The fans, I think, deserve more for the club it is. So we've got to go in, play for the badge, do well, just give 100% every game and try and pick up some points. Just lastly, for yourself personally, what do you hope to get out of this period at the Hive? I'm looking forward to just playing full-time football, coming in, training every day, just progressing as a player and helping the team out. It was a resolute display at York Road by Simon Bassey's side last Saturday. Let's catch up with the highlights. Uh, by Remy Clarina. Oh, 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 
The arrival of first team coach Simon Bassey saw him bring in assistant Dave Anderson. Dave will be working as a number two to Simon as well as working with the club's goalkeepers. We sat down with him to get his thoughts on arriving at the Hive London. Dave, welcome to Barnet. It's great to have you here. Um, must be delighted to be, to be back in the game. Well, it's something that I hadn't considered. Um, people give me some stick because they said I'd retired. I, I, I've retired from management, you know, and um, I'm sure the people at Barnet will be delighted to hear that as well. <laughs> but, you know, when, when Simon sort of spoke to me about coming in the system and, and sort of doing the goalkeepers and... You know, they're quite close to Barnet and in all honesty the facility is incredible. So it, it wasn't a difficult decision, believe me. You man who knows plenty about the non league circuit, Barnet, a club who perhaps many tipped and shouldn't be in the National League, of course had a bad season this year. It must be really pleasing for you to, to be here. Well it is and, and you know it I think that the to have a great ground and a great structure and a great facility is one thing but you know obviously our job is to try and match the, the, the football team with that and I'm sure people appreciate it won't happen overnight but we're trying to make it happen as quickly as we can and and I, and I think that the work that Simon especially has put in in, in the last sort of week and a half has been excellent um, but it's little steps you know and, and you know people understand that. I think the big phrase at the moment that everyone seems to be using is that everything's towards a big rebuild. I know the chairman used in some of his statements. Is that something that interested you? A bit of a longer-term project? Well, I think I think that 
the first thing is that you know the recruitment side of it not you know will be dealt with by by Simon and I'll have a say in it I'm sure um, uh, at the moment uh, our job is with one eye to, to look at what we we want to think about in the summer but in the other eye have a look at the squad that we've got here and effectively give them a chance to to show us what they're about and you know their attitude I have to say has been excellent been an easy group to work with their their application and, and desire and commitment to the game on Saturday you couldn't you couldn't really say anything other than it was it was superb I mean it wasn't a great game of football to watch we all know that you know that that's a little bit to do with with both teams and, and styles of play but we just wanted them to show show us and, and in fact the supporters that they do care and that was, that was a start because they they definitely showed us that the fans have seen a bit of Simon in terms of his interviews he's obviously a man you know exceptionally well just tell the Barnet fans what they should ex- what they can expect from Simon uh, we go back a long time um, in saying that we haven't worked together for a long time um, I, I had Simon at Wimbledon and actually retired him as a player uh, and put him on the staff because uh, I just knew he had an ability but from that his, his career is his own and, and he, he spent I'm guessing 14, 15 years with Wimbledon right through the leagues if I get this wrong he'll kill me but I think it's six promotions something mm. like that so it's a CV that's 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 really really impressive what he's always done Simon is kept himself in the background others would front it and I think it's time for him to step out of that and, and be the guy. So I think if you speak to the players, the coaching's been superb. I've watched it, you know, I've been around it. Um, and it's very much his thing. And, and I'm just there, you know, not even for experience, because in all honesty, he, he, he's more experienced than I am at, at a higher level. But, but certainly as another purry eyes, it helps. Let's talk about the goalkeepers, because you've done a bit of work with them. Eamon and James, two very young goalkeepers with potentially big futures yes yes I I must admit I am enjoying that you know that's you know I was a goalkeeper myself a hundred years ago um, and to have young goalkeepers that are willing and you know are good prospects for the club is good and, and Eamon's found himself in the team you know um, because of Lucci's injury and, and, and that and, and he has to take advantage of it and we have to be careful with him because he is a young goalkeeper and you know I'm very wary of that stuff um, but it's been good we uh, teaching them how to smile they're allowed to smile in training and talk about it and discuss it and go over points it's a, it's a very it's a it's a specialist position you know uh, I, I always joke with the, the goalkeepers listen when you look at the group of players who are, who are working with the manager they can't come here and do this you can go there and do what they're doing you know, joke as a joke. So it's a specialist position. So we get to we get to talk about that, talk about how they see it, and how I see it, and how I can improve them. So it's not a, a regime. It's um it's the goalkeepers' union. I'm sure you've heard about it before. The mental side of of goalkeeping, I guess, is almost as important as the ability side for two young goalkeepers, in particular, with a focus on Eamon this bit of game time he's getting will certainly help him mature oh no end no end Eamon won't realise how good this is for him and until the next time nearly it's it's one of them things that I, I remember 100 years ago in my own career I went into the first team younger than Eamon and it, it, it was a daunting prospect but it, it actually helped me massively the next time so it, of course it, it it's not the it's not ideal because young goalkeepers need to be in and out a little bit and have a senior goalkeeper around them if it's possible. But you have to take advantage of these chances. But with his frame and his attitude and his application to what I've seen so far, he should be thinking about making making the, the first team here his his position. You know, in the next year, two years. You know. So, um, but it, it's 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 a, with young goalkeepers confidence is massive and that's what we're working hard with you know just lastly talking of the short term 12 games to go we laid a, a nice little foundation at Maidenhead I think Vaughan called it baby steps and, and yeah. um, Simon called it a little step forward mm-hmm. how important is it we start trying to back that up on a consistent basis 
Yeah, well, I think that's what the team have suffered from. We were sort of, you know, and, and I, I'm not here to talk about any other regime. You know, it, that's it's not what I'm about. But, uh, you know, I have watched a lot of footage and a lot of games. And, and the problem with the team so far has been, well, one hit wonder would be the, the saying I would use is that they've, they've never backed up a good performance with another good performance. And, and never really backed up a good performance with an all right performance. It's always been two or three poor performances after it. So that's the ask. Um, you know, last week, can't fault them. What does it get you this week? Nothing. You have to start the whole process again, you know. The last time the shots made the short trip to the Hive London, it was a memorable evening for the bees. It was topped off by a worldie from Wes von Gook. And let's take a look at how the action unfolded. <laughs> That's all we have time for on this week's Live from the Hive pre-match show. It's time to get into the action as the bees take on the shots. I'll hand you over to our commentary team of Aaron Pullen and myself, Adam Rowe. <laughs> 